hearts and minds be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Alleluia! He's more awake than the six o'clock crowd was. <laughs> So an interesting reading we have here this morning, right? This morning is supposed to be a morning of joy. It's supposed to be a morning of, of wonder. It's supposed to be a morning of happiness. That's why we have all the gold out and all the flowers and everything here this morning, right? It's, it's beautiful. It's something that you anticipate. It's something you look forward to. Can you imagine how Mary Magdalene and the other Mary felt that morning as they made their way to the tomb? Just two days ago, they had seen Jesus beaten and hung on a cross. They watched him die. Watched him get put into a tomb. A rock moved in front of the door, probably much bigger than this rock. And guards placed there. We'll get to that just a little bit later. But they're going there that morning for what reason? They can't possibly be going to anoint the body for burial because there's a big rock, remember? And there's guards. So why are they going to the tomb that morning? What is it that they expect to see? Did they actually believe what Jesus had told them that three days after he died that he would rise again? Did they get that? They went there in anguish, in not understanding what had happened, flooded with emotions. And as they approach the tomb, there's an earthquake. And the rock moves and the guards fall down as if they are dead. Interesting choice of words there, actually. And two angels appear to Mary and the other Mary, and they say, Who are you looking for? Why are you here looking for Jesus? Or to quote Luke, Why do you look for the living among the dead? This is a tomb. He's alive. He's not going to be here. Come and see where he was laying. Come and see where he had been. And then go and tell his disciples. And then what happens? They leave quickly, and who do they meet? Who do they meet? Say it louder. Who do they meet? Jesus. Louder. Come on. Jesus. They meet Jesus. And they grab hold of his, they fall down to his feet, and they grab hold of his feet, and they worship him. And he says to them, go and tell my brothers and sisters to meet me in Galilee. He tells who? To go and tell the disciples. Mary and Mary. He tells who? To go tell the disciples? Mary Magdalene. And the other Mary who happens to be his mother, right? In case you were wondering. The other Mary is his mother. Um, but they are not men. <laughs> Right? <laughs> They're women. Who's the first person that sees the resurrection? Women. Right. Thank you. Women are the first people to see the, the risen Christ. Women are the first people who are given the charge to go into all the world and to tell my disciples that I'm coming and I'm going to meet you there. Women are the ones who are heralding the message of this morning. The message of a rock that's moved. The message of guards that lay down like they're dead. I said we'd get back to those guards in just a minute. Just a chapter before this, Pilate told the high priest to make the tomb as secure as they are able. Which means to make it as secure as you possibly can. Right? Because what did the Jewish high priest think was going to happen? They were going to come and steal his body. They were going to come and take Jesus' body to make it look like he had rose from the dead, right? Because they, weren't, they had heard what had happened. They had heard that Jesus had been telling his disciples that he was going to die and then he was going to rise again, right? 
They kind of got the message. And they were afraid that the disciples were going to stage something. So they put a guard there. A couple guards there, actually. Bless you. And when the earthquake came, when the stone rolled away, the guards fell down like they were dead. Because not even the power of Rome can stop the power of God. You see, this morning is not about how much we love God. Some of us got up really early this morning. We put on nice clothes. And we showed up to worship to show God how much we love Him. And that's a good thing. But that's not what this day is about. It's not about us showing God how much we love Him. This day, specifically this day, the day that Jesus walked out of the tomb when the rock rolled away and the guards fell down like they were dead. Jesus walking out of the tomb is the day that God shows us exactly how much God loves us. How much God loves you. Because in this story we see a bunch of things that, that make no sense. Earthquakes, rocks moving on their own, guards falling down as if they were dead. A man who was dead, now alive. When people go into the grave, they don't. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. When you're dead, you're dead. That's the end. But this day, God says, death is not the end. God says to us on this day that a rock's not going to stop me. God says to us on this day, a couple of guards aren't going to stop me. God says to us this day, the power of whatever government is over you that tries to keep you a slave is not going to stop me. God says there's absolutely nothing in all of the world that's going to stop me because my son is more important to me than that. And you are also my child and you are more important to me than that. You see, it's not about how much we love God. It's about how much God loves us even when we mess up. Even when we think we've done things that keep us from God. Because God has made each and every one of us flawless. When we saw He loved us, when we believed he loved us. God took away everything that was wrong in our lives and made us perfect like him. It doesn't mean we don't have troubles. It doesn't mean that life's not hard. It doesn't mean that sometimes there's rocks in the way or that there's guards in the way. But if we truly believe in the power of the one who walked out of that tomb, then nothing is going to keep us from doing what he's called us to do. And nothing is going to keep us from being the people he's called us to be. So on this day, remember that God did not leave his son in the tomb because he loves you more than that. And God has set you on a plan to go into the world so that everyone can know how much he loves you and how much he loves them. So remember, Christ is risen.